so excited to announce our next speaker. Uh, Camille Hall, the driving force behind Creative Ambition LLC, brings a unique perspective to AI-driven technology, shaped by her experiences where technology did not adequately cater to all users. She's eager to share uh, her insights on developing AI that truly understands and adapts to individual user needs, um, reflecting her commitment to enhancing U UX through personalized and intelligent design. In an era where the digital landscape is rapidly evolving, this session, the front end revolution, building seamless AI-driven user experiences with React.js offers a deep dive into AI and web development. Everybody give, it a, give a big round of applause for Camille. I'd like to introduce myself as well, Camille Hall, the lady with the uh, blue and purple hair today, is we're gonna be rocking it out and having some fun. Uh, I am the founder of Creative Ambition, as well as a software engineer, and most of the time I do front end, but as well back end, but front end is my heart and my soul. So we're gonna dive into that today and kind of speak about the revolution of it as AI is being adopted on a more widespread account since it's always been around. Um, so before we get started though, some ground rules, kind of like our last speaker, Christy Boone, I like an environment that's very relaxed, loose, because I'm an introvert, even though I have to be extrovert right now. So anyone can just raise your hand, talk, laugh, do whatever. We're gonna try and make this very interactive, all right? Um, I'm like, I think I have another ground rule too. And yes, I love the clapping, please. Let's see. Number two. <laughs> there are no rules, that's, that's the other one. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. The front end resolution, a revolution, building seamless AI driven user experience with React. That's a mouthful, let's keep it going. As well, you guys, take a notice to these pictures because these are all AI generated photos that I like prompted. So if you like them, if you don't like them, I'm the one responsible. All right, so this is kind of like the introduction of where we're going to be navigating today. We'll kind of go over the user experience and why it's even important in today's climate. Uh, we'll go over the AI and web development, kind of navigate into predictive user interfaces, as well as uh, antipis <laughs> anticipating designs. I'm not gonna be able to say that word, y'all, but you can just read it yourself. Um, AI tools that every React developer should know. Definitely take notes on that. We'll have uh, a little demo if we have some time. We'll see how much of it we can get into. And then conclusions and questions. Okay, David. So, user experience and why it's even important in today's digital landscape. I want to kind of take us back so we can understand where we started from, at least most of us. I think from a look around in the room, it seems like most of us might know these logos right here. Do y'all know these logos right here? Half of them, which ones did y'all use? Zanga. 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 Zanga, there's some Zanga people here? <laughs> for books or music, like what did y'all use it for? Any high five people in here? Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Any Black Planet people in here? Yeah, I was one of the Black Planet people. Yes, I definitely had a whole bunch of glitter stars coming from my Black Planet page. But, so out of all of these, can you guys tell me like what's the commonality between them? If y'all maybe used all four of them, maybe used two of them, three of them? Can you tell me like what interests you? Why did you sign up to use it besides your friends and everyone using it? Why, why did you stick around? That's it, look at y'all, this is the answer down here. Personalization, boom, down here. So a lot of us, especially when we were younger and even now, we like the fact that we can tweak it to our individual styles. MySpace, you had your music if you came on there, maybe your photos, maybe your top 10 friends list. It was whatever you wanted to make it. Same with, um, let's come back up here with Black Planet. This one was like an introduction page. It was like your MySpace for a lot of people in the African American community, and you could literally customize it as well. Uh, your Zanga, 
y'all went crazy with the Zangas. I was looking at some of the old school images on the web just a minute ago. And like little go-go puffs and unicorns and a whole bunch of craziness. It was wild. Uh, high five as well. Full customization, full personalization. And it was fun because you would get just stuck in it, like creating your page. And maybe some people um, created their page or revamped it every month or every two months, every quarter. So I think it was definitely the personalization. So y'all nailed it. Now, current day, where we're at right now, there's this big war. I don't know if y'all know about it. Discord versus Slack. Who's team Discord in here? Team Discord, team Discord. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Team Slack. <laughs> who likes them both? Who likes them both? For different things, you know? <laughs> so those who raise their hand for Discord, why do y'all love it? The gifts? All right, and what else? Discord. Discord feels more intuitive. Mm. Oh. Wow, I'm surprised. Okay, go ahead. Yes, that's interesting to hear that it's really good for developers, but it's also really intuitive. Because, you know, my first time on Discord, I was so lost. I was like, there's so much happening, and what kind of servers, and what, what, what am I doing? Uh, with Slack, I felt, for me, it was very intuitive. I kind of understood the, the land, the lay of the land, per se. But I use both of them myself, just depending on what's happening. Um, but essentially, user experience and why it's important is really about the personalization for that user. And granted, there's so many websites out there, and there's so many companies and their brand identity and kind of their brand colors or brand tone, and companies want to keep that, but at the same time, they want to deliver a personalized uh, front end or user experience for that person so that they can keep coming back. That's kind of like what we see in TikTok with their algorithms, and they keep pushing and pushing content that they've seen that you've liked or maybe watched and reviewed because they want your attention. It's an attention economy. Okay? So that's why it's important. That's why user experience is important even in today. All right. So AI and web development. I'm going to go over some things on the left first, which most of us already know about. Now I'll go over some things on the right side, which they're kind of emerging. So as far as benefits for web development, um, you're looking at your improved user engagement. So if you create these tools that people are interested in, you're going to see that there's more traction, more attention, just like we were talking about. Um, some real life scenarios that people are using um, to increase engagement is chatbots, which I'm not really a fan of, unless they're like really, really good. But chatbots can as well keep people engaged. Um, generative AI, um, you have your efficient UI generation, which we will dive into later, which can produce um, different UI components and layouts for the user. And then lastly, your AI-driven recommendations. So that's kind of like your Spotify or your music apps. But personally, me, I'm you know, pro Spotify. Um, if you can switch on, I think there's a feature on Spotify you can switch on to have it magically add, you know, songs to your playlist that you've already created. And so it will see like, okay, you like to listen to, you know, okay. Matter of fact, who do y'all like to listen to? You said Nas? I said yeah, today. Okay. Anything? You said what? Dio. Dio. What's that? I see. I would like to try that. Anyone else? What do y'all listen to? J. Cole. J. Cole? And so what if they took Dio, classical rock from the 80s, and J. Cole and the AI said, let's magically put it together. You think that would like fly? That would just be really, really abstract. It would have to really be a genius to make it work. So it's very two different 
um, genres, two different fields that the AI has to analyze the, the tones, the different beats, the lyrics, all these different things to, in order to recommend more songs for you. So I love recommendations. Um, anyone else who's using like Netflix and things, it will also kind of recommend some movies and whatnot too. Now, moving on to the right side, um, other opportunities that we're seeing with um, this front end and AI integration is your AI driven content delivery networks. I am so interested in this one, though I've yet to try it, but it's essentially like your CDNs, but the AI is assisting to kind of cache and distribute them tailored on that user's behaviors over a course of time and be able to um, dynamically render out that content for them. So that's like new and emerging, at least for me. I don't know if anyone else has worked with AI CDNs yet. No, okay, okay. But yeah, that's one I would definitely recommend y'all to check out too. Um, this next one, as far as other opportunities we're seeing with AI, is um, smart image and video compression. And just kind of like the, the CDNs, the generative uh, AI being able to dynamically adjust the compression rates of the image or the video depending on that user's um, speed of internet. So if they're at you know, a big football game at a stadium and just a whole lot of people pinging and pinging and the internet's like really slow, uh, the AI can be able to understand like, oh, okay, it's taking this much time to load the page. Let's go ahead and just send it on over images and uh, videos that are going to contribute to a faster load time for that user. So that's something that AI can as well assist with and even our front end developers will be able to assist with uh, that integration of that feature. Predictive analytics. Now this is one I feel like we are seeing a lot more of. Um, so again, just taking a whole bunch of data, having the AI analyze it and be able to come out with different metrics for that user. And again, you'll see that in like um, the recommendations we were speaking of and dynamically loading content for that user. Uh, and then our AI optimized resource. So again, same kind of theme. We're prioritizing the loading of critical resources that impact the user's immediate experience. So if we know that it's kind of like um, with caching and with, oh my gosh, let me not forget what it's called. Du -du -du -du, service workers, thank you, thank you. With like caching and service workers, kind of like we wanna be able to give them an experience even if their load time is bad, even if they're offline. Um, so with the AI optimized resource loading, we can leverage these kind of use cases as well, which again, analyzes users' interaction patterns, their navigation, what pages do they stay on? Are they only on the chat page and maybe not the about us and contact us page? Um, all these different things can kind of as well, uh, can empower us front end developers to incorporate. <laughs> and again, check out my cool pictures, you guys. Oh my gosh, this one's groovy. All right, so we're gonna like navigate into the predictive user interfaces some more. All right, so I'm gonna read this real quick. Predictive user interfaces leverages AI to improve experiences by anticipating users' needs based on past interactions. I'm gonna do my movie voice right now, so y'all feel me, y'all feel me. This concept known as, y'all help me out? Anticipatory. Anticipatory. It's a, no. <laughs> That design <laughs> aims to provide users with seamless and personalized experiences. Whew. Mic drop, no, okay. Uh, so here's my little cute chart. It's kind of like the user interactions. Again, it's like that data that we need. We need the data. And then the AI is analyzing all that data for us so we can like chill and live our best lives. And then we have our what? Y'all so good at that anticipatory design. I feel like, you know, if I take one shot, I may be able to say it right, you know, start getting it. Catch me at the after party today. 
predictive user interface is the last one. So we take all of this information right over here, the data, analytics, crunching it all up, got the design, <laughs> and then we have this beautiful output of user interfaces and or the user experience depending on what we're building. <laughs> I love this image. <laughs> man, I really put this word in a lot today. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to, man, we just going to skip that one. Sheesh. <laughs> All right, some, uh, some other things that uh, the AI can anticipate are uh, smart suggestions. We see that every day. So the AI can analyze the user's preference and contents to suggest relevant uh, actions or content such as the Musing streaming app, which we discussed. Um, even when you're typing on your iPhone right now, you know, some words, it can fill in the rest for you. So those are, as well, use cases that uh, we've seen, even AI or machine learning, all of that to kind of come in and facilitate a better user experience. Um, form completion down here. Again, same thing. It's helping the user fill things out quickly. Especially if people are on the go, they have busy lifestyles, they have kids yelling at them, it's just, it's just a lot. We need that AI to kind of help give them a nudge, kind of help walk them through this. Um, hand holding especially. I know there's a company I was working for, a startup, where they specifically tailored to executives and chiefs and a whole bunch of like high powered people. And so these people live really, really busy lifestyles. And so when they come, onto the website that I was helped building out, they want to experience that is, can y'all guess? Fast. Fast, does it work? Can they get in uh, the information that they need and get out? These people are running businesses, uh, the top businesses around, so they need it fast, they need it reliable, they need it working. So these are as well experiences where having that AI nudge to kind of help fill out a form, something so simple like a form can help these people out. Um, like onboarding forms, if you have for some reason their data or something about them already, or you can integrate where you can um, scrape the data from whatever uh, social media or LinkedIn account that they already have their data, that AI can maybe help fill out that form for them. Kind of like we see with um, when you're applying for jobs, submit your resume and then it auto-populates. That's helpful because we don't want to sit there and list out 18 years worth of experience. So other things that we can use AI for. Predictive loading. So that's kind of what we touched on in the earlier slide as well. So again, um, the latency is really, really bad. It will be able to predictively load content that the user will need. All right. Oh, you know what? This one I did find was like an interesting use case. I've yet to see it, but I think it would be really cool. Um, it's this bottom one, contextual notifications. So the AI, again, is kind of analyzing the users, and it's pretty, it's kind of scary when you think about it, but it's like monitoring the users' comings and goings. You know, do you go to school at 7 o'clock in the morning? Do you leave to work at 3 p.m. after school? And it's kind of like monitoring <laughs> your interactions by using their app, maybe like your Google Maps or whatnot. And from that point, um, it's able to uh, take all that information and give you a prompt. Uh, so I've even seen it on my iPhone with uh, Maps, Apple Maps. It will literally see when I'm like driving away, it's like, oh, it's going to take you 22 minutes to get to your daughter's school today. I'm like, how do you even know I'm going there right now? I never told you. I never talked to you. How do you know I'm driving? It's like all that experience, but it's kind of helpful. If it said it's going to take you three hours to get to your daughter's school today, I would be like, what? What's happening? What is the highway closed? So those little nudges, that preemptive, um, data without you even asking for it can be really helpful. So in this use case, for example, a ride sharing app, no names, no names y'all, a ride sharing app can notify the user about surge pricing before they even request a ride. I needed this yesterday y'all. It took me about 18 hours to get to Tulsa yesterday, okay? 18 hours. It was bad, I had my luggage lost, it was bad. 
And I, when I was ready to leave, I needed an Uber, and now it was like three times the, the rate within a five minute span. I was like, oh. So this is the time where I could have used a feature like this. When I was on the Uber app five minutes prior and saw that it was the normal rate, I'm like, okay, I got a few minutes before I place the order. No, I needed to tell me, no, place it now because things are happening, it's about to surge. I need that preemptive nudge. Granted, you know, Uber, or, you know, our makeshift riding app, they probably wouldn't like, you know, me knowing that there's about to be a surge because they want them coins. But, you know, AI for good, right? We want to use AI for the good of mankind. <laughs> Save some money. All right, so I like to give out treats and goodies here. AI tools every React developer should have. These are just a few, because we'd be here a long time if I listed out all the ones I really like. But I was trying to list out things that are somewhat newish, and maybe we can share the wealth in here today. So let's see how I did. All right, local AI. Does anyone know about this one yet? Oh, okay, okay. What do you use it for? Yes, and how long would you say, so in case that anyone didn't hear, um, essentially he uses local AI to create Figma designs and prototypes and kind of get the wireframe um, in order to kind of rapidly develop, because sometimes you get stuck on the UI or how it's supposed to look or you know all of that front end UI experience. So this can kind of help navigate that so you can continue working on some of the functionality and other details. And so tell me, like, what is your background right now? Are you, like, back end, front end? Like, where are you at? It takes long. If you don't have, like, a UI designer, man. Woo. It's, it's, I've been there before. It's no, no fun, unless you're like a really great designer and coder as well, but yeah. And so can you tell me, I'm sorry, what's your name too? Cam. One more time? Cam. Cam? Yep. Okay, Camille, Cam, okay. Uh, so tell me, when you're using local AI, will you say that it saves you more time than if you were to go and use some other UI library? Or, Pretty mm -hmm. gnarly, y'all. Take these notes. <laughs> um, yeah, so essentially it was saying it would take him one hour with local AI, whereas opposed to if he went out and built it with his own libraries, own UI libraries, you're looking at about a week. And that, that would be about the same for me and maybe even longer depending on how complex the, the website is, especially if you don't have like your, um, your system design or your design systems, then you're looking at a point where you have to you know, create all your components or add them in, add the layers, all the stuff. So um, a couple of advantages here that I wanna go over real quickly are, so with local AI, how they're kind of built, and I was trying to zoom in to this little image so y'all can kind of see the, what's happening behind the scenes. But they use in-house large design models trained on millions of designs. So they're already you know, using the cheat codes. They got the designs, they got the data like we were talking about in those, that fourth step. Um, and they take the millions of designs and products to convert designs and, and to convert and create designs into high quality production ready code in one click is what they say. In one click? How many clicks it take you? It probably takes more than one, but it's still way simpler than doing it yourself. Yeah. yeah. I went on here, I was like, I, one click, right? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love it though. They're, they're optimistic. <laughs> um, so again, like Cam was saying, it integrates well with Figma so you can seamlessly convert designs right inside of Figma. Um, so you're essentially just looking at this picture here. Ooh, I can zoom in. <laughs> you're looking at your design here on the left hand side. Uh, so it takes that design and it kind of converts it into code so that we can now use it and not focus on the, des um, the designing part so much. Um, and then you can deploy it from there. And so they do have different ways that you can use this uh, as far as like frameworks. You can take the code, put it in React, Gatsby, Next, et cetera, coming soon, all of that. <laughs> Views coming soon. Oh. Real quick too, like I'm curious, because this is a React talk. How many of y'all like use React? All right, all right, all right. So that was kind of, it seemed like majority. And what about like Vue? All right, got about three, 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 all right. Angular. Oh, we got two, wow. So we got some major React people in here. I always like to do a little vote and it's always React first. I'm surprised, usually Vue is, I think, the last, and Angular is a little bit more, but today is a little top story. Yeah. All right, so some other little boring stuff we're just gonna say real quick. Generates component-based React code and allows for easier integration with back-end API in data resources. Limitations, may not be able to accurately convert complex designs. Nah, not yet. Uh, <laughs> Um, and so local AI is one of them, but I also like to give y'all some, you know, some treats of down there in a little tiny text. Um, there's an, another alternative, which is uh, Builder.io. So you can use that as well. It's pretty comparable to what we have here. Are y'all ready for some more AI tools that React developers should? Anyway, all right, let's go. Woo! Devon AI, this one has a lot of press right now. Y'all know about this Devon AI? Yeah. Trying to take your job and 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 my job. Now I'm over here speaking because I ain't got no job. No. <laughs> I'm like, the AI cannot speak for me. That much I can do. You know, I, I honestly would probably work for Dev and AI, a little shameless plug, um, but then realizing that they're probably going to take me out one day. <laughs> so for those who don't know about Dev and AI, it, it's, it's, trying to, it's trying to be us. All of us full stack coders, it's trying to be us right now. Trying to take our job with its own terminal, its own web browser, its own CI, CD system. It, 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 why? I thought ChatGPT was enough. You just generate the code and no one knows what to do with it unless you understand the ecosystem. I have so many people, so many friends of mine who are non-technical and they started using ChatGPT or other AI models to generate code. They're like, I'm gonna build my website myself. Forget Wix, I'm gonna build it myself. I'm like, all right. They're like, yeah, I got the code from ChatGPT. I'm like, cool. They're like, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know. <laughs> The index.html, the CSS, I, I, I had the index.html up, but it looked ugly. I'm like, well, did you have the CSS on there? Where do you put it? So they don't understand what to do with it at this point. But Devon AI is supposed to. They have a link here where you can test it out yourself. You can preview it. I think, I don't know if they're still like waiting. I think it was on wait list, but y'all can check it out yourself. I'm not gonna click on it right now. It's gonna go kaboom. Uh, <laughs> but so some capabilities, and this is pretty like, this one right here, long-term reasoning and planning, that's pretty standard right now. You see that a lot uh, with different AI models and um, other AI wrapper um, tools. You kind of see that long-term reasoning and planning. Your ability to recall relevant content at every step, pretty much the same. Learning over time and fixing mistakes. So I've actually watched videos of this Devon AI have um, like build errors and whatnot to see like what it does to um, resolve that issue. And from what I'm seeing, it does literally just take that error message 
ask itself, how do I fix my own error message? And it just keeps going and keeps going. Just like we would. It's, it was modeled after us, I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, again, like I was saying, it has a shell, code editor, browser, sandbox, all that stuff. I'm probably gonna use it, but I'm probably gonna be mad that it's here. <laughs> and this last one, VO. Dead. Who knows about this VO.dev? Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I like this one. Not a lot of people know about this one as much. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. This one for me was a game changer. This, this right here, this right here was a game changer. So UI generation for React developers. Vercel, they created this VO. It enables React developers to streamline front-end development by automating UI generation. What does that really mean, though? What does that really mean? So, in order to see what it means, I created some prompts down here. These are my prompts, I just didn't label it. These are prompts. So, we're all, if you want to follow along, we're gonna navigate to this little link right here, vo.dev, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna put in this prompt, if I can copy, because you know, I'm in the, I'm in the little ecosystem here. Okay, let's hope it copied. A unique e-commerce page for robots. In case anyone's listening. Oh, vo.dev, here I am. Generate, refine, ship. Generate UI with Shad CN UI from simple text prompts and images. Looks like ChatGPT. Looks like your your Anthrop, your Claude, it, you know your Gemini. Kind of gives you the same feel. But what do you do? So I'm gonna put in my prompt here: a unique e-commerce page for robots. Let's see what we got. <coughs> okay, something's happening. Okay. We got some loading, some loading going on. Hmm. Hmm. Do 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 just like we didn't have to do the, with the local AI and it just creates the UI for you. That's amazing. All right, let's see, are we done loading? All right, so our first page is generating some UI for us. We should do a little voting session. <laughs> Who votes for A? Right here, huh? Uh, what about B? Page UI. Got a little futuristic, future featured robots. These are all placeholder images, by the way. All right, it's not too bad. What about this UI, the future of robotics? And remember, this is an e-commerce page. We're trying to sell, we're trying to sell these robots. So you got a big shop now, you got a big image of hopefully your robot, the price points, all the robots you wanna get, the humanoid robot, only for $9.99.99, no. So with VO, I just put in a simple prompt. I didn't even tell it what colors or anything. I just said a, a unique, I don't think it's really unique, a unique e-commerce page for robots. Should I do the thumbs down on these? I don't think it was that unique. Let's try a different one. Let's try a different prompt. Let's do a coming soon landing page. We're going to give it some style, dark theme, minimalistic. Let's see what it does. Let's see what we do. Let's see what we do. New generation. All right, we're back at the top. Dark theme, minimalistic. Wait, and we're gonna wait, and we're gonna wait, and we're gonna wait. Ooh, 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 coming soon. We're hard at work preparing something amazing for you. Sign up to be the first to know when we, what's behind? Launch. <laughs> How long would it take y'all to normally create a page like this, realistically? 
Did I hear a couple of months? <laughs> Who's going to build a page like this in three seconds? <laughs> Ain't none of us building pages like this in three seconds. And this is a pretty simple page, right? It's not, I mean, maybe, maybe at best in, in 10 minutes if we have all the components ready for us. And so it gives you different options as well. Some of the exciting is coming too. But, 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 this is responsive. We don't got to worry about the responsiveness. Hold up, so you mean to tell me, I just give you a prompt, you build the UI, you're responsive. Let's see how we're doing with the mobile. It's a little squishy, but not bad. Let's do one more. <laughs> Let's add some color to it. Contact us page for toy unicorns. Pastel gradient background. Let's take a look here. I'm so excited. Ooh. Let me go back to desktop. All right, so it already generated A for us, uh, style version A. We got a contact us page. We'd love to hear from you. Fill out the form below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Let's go over here. Unicorn Toys. So it has a little logo, a little logo situation. Get in contact. This actually reminds me of like <laughs> early 2000 like web pages, kind of like that Zanga we were talking about earlier. Like it's just very. Hmm. Toy Unicorn Company. We create the most magical and whimsical toy unicorns for all ages. Don't be ashamed, you guys. Embrace it. Contact us today to learn more. You know what? I like this one, but I want to maybe tweak some things around. What do you th think we should tweak about this? What should we change? I like the color scheme, yeah, like how that is, like how the background images, I like the background image and put it on the first one. So this logo situation up here? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So how would we describe that in a prompt? Is it like a gradient? Is that what that is? So you want this gradient? Yeah, that gradient right there. Is that, that's a gradient? I don't even know which one they used here. Let's tell it though, because we're talking to AI, remember? So I think it, that gradient looks a little bit lighter. Would y'all describe it as that in a prop? Can you tell the gradient from B? Let's, I mean, let's try it. Use the gradient. I'm going to say it again. Can you tell the gradient from B? From, what are, what are they calling these? Versions? Options? I don't know. Option B. Let's see if it's able to do this. No, it's not. It did change the gradient. <laughs> Keep these colors? Mm -hmm. I think it, oh my word. I apologize, everybody. <laughs> I think it might have kept your colors and changed your gradient. Yeah, we want to bring over the gradient from this one. Oh, never mind. I'm like, I don't know if it would be able to do that. No, let's make the gradient, you guys are putting me to work today, lighter, more, not really transparent, opaque. I don't even know if that's a. How do you spell opaque? Wait, this is a cube? Let's see what happens. I want it to explode on me. I feel like it went back to it. I feel like it's about the same, right? Oh, it's a little lighter. It's a little lighter. Let's see if we can add that logo in. Add a, well, we're still doing unicorns. Add a unicorn. 
Toys logo at the, we want to do top left? With the icon? Are we? With appropriate icon. I don't know. Let's see what's appropriate. Unicorn icon. Right? I might have to plug that in if, oh, interesting. <laughs> Is that a unicorn? <laughs> it's a very magical looking unicorn. <laughs> All right, let's describe it. Well, let's stick to a unicorn icon. I was almost going to call it an emoji. Emoji icon. That's not a unicorn. Not a unicorn. Not a unicorn. One more time. No context, add a horn. Just add a horn. To the icon. I think we're about to break the whole icon library. I like the way you think. All right. Let's try buttons. It should be able to change the button. The submit button is too large. Make it smaller. And what color should we make it? Pink. I knew y'all gonna say pink. <laughs> Predictive, I told you. Anticipating? No. <laughs> Got one, got one little uh, revamp. All right, so let's say we really, really love this page, right? We just love this page. Actually, I think I want to do the dark theme page. Let's go back. Let's get back to back to dark theme. Where's it when we built? Do 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 do. All right, we we'll just plug it back in. A coming soon landing page. I'm gonna mix it up. What kind of page should it be instead of a coming soon page? E-commerce, contact us. What kind of pages we got? Blog. Team page, blog. Ooh. Build a blog page. Dark theme. A unicorn? <laughs> About <laughs> unicorns. It's going to be a dark theme. It's going to be some <laughs> evil unicorns. Now, with, v, uh, with VO, they have it to where you can do the speed or the quality. I actually like the speed better than the quality, but we can try it out because we have not yet done it. Let's see. It's going to be even longer wait, so we might need some like background music right now. Okay. Yeah, we got some. Unicorn Tales. Discover the magic and wonder of unicorns through captivating stories and enchanting tales. That's a cute blog, right? It's a cute blog theme. The last unicorn. <laughs> unicorn Whisperer. A young girl discovers she has a special connection with unicorns and must use her gift to give them an ancient evil. What? What? Ancient evil, what? <laughs> I think it's picking up. <laughs> OMG, all right. <laughs> Unicorn tails. It really likes this like rainbow situation. <laughs> Exploring the magical world of unicorns. Dive into the enchanting realm of this mythical creatures and discover their captivating stories. This blog is like, eh, I don't really like the layouts of these blogs so much. It's okay. Now this one is just a no for me. I mean, granted, it's given, 
kind of like giving old school WordPress. Yeah, yeah. 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 right. Well, WordPress, little dates and whatnot. All right, so which one should we like use right now and we want to like deploy it for real, for real? You guys like A? It's, it's the evil like unicorns over here. <laughs> Is it responsive still? Okay, okay, okay. It looks better on the I was gonna say it looks way better. Oh my gosh, let's. All of these look way better on the scroll. Does it look keyboard Ooh, let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> She's answering my question, but I was asking if it's accessible and if she could tab through, and that's what we're looking at now. Love it. All right, so for real, y'all, for real, for real, we're gonna try, try and like get this on our um, page right now. So we got our generated AI, UI, that's a lot of eyes and I, okay, code. So we got a few options I'm seeing. We got the component itself. And again, this is all React, y'all. This is all React. Got the component itself. Let's see. Got all the styles, the header, the links up there, the navigation. You got your main class with all the content inside. Okay. So pretty much the page. We got the some basic CSS, your layout. Let's see here, and so, again, just load it. And then as well, I'm seeing up here at the top, add this component to your project. What? So we can literally just use these uh, commands and add it in. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. See, let's see what happens, let's see what happens. I'm going to copy this. And y'all, this is like real life, so if it breaks on us, just act like we didn't see it. <laughs> All right, let's come over to our little development area. Now, I kind of got a um, just a basic Next.js app going on, just so we can not be here forever while I set it up. So I kind of got something going. But we're going to go ahead and create or drop in this command and see what happened. Coming soon page, well, we didn't do it coming soon, but it's okay. Y'all yeah, don't be trying to copy my tokens now, I'm gonna change it now. Proceed, yeah, ooh, upgrade, oh, I was really hope it doesn't break now. Upgrade. What should we name the component? This was a blog, we're just gonna call it blog page, blog. Done. We love that. Click it out. All right, so what just happened? Blog.ts. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be mad at it. Don't be mad at it. Let's clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm, come down here, the image, we'll leave that. And the props, we're just going to infer because I ain't got the time. And we'll leave the image as is. So by using that command, it just popped in this blog.txx page for me. Now, granted, I didn't get the CSS or the layout, unless it's, yeah, all right. Let's rock with it, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got so far. The blog, so we're gonna go ahead and make this our main page so we can actually see what it's looking like here. Do -do. <laughs> so this is kind of the layout that we saw earlier. I kind of already snuck and did it. It would essentially look something like this. Um, and then our, doo -doo -doo -doo. sorry y'all, I make a lot of noises. I'm like, where is it at? Which index page is it? Doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna go ahead and add this in. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We got a blog. We don't need to do that. I don't think it's set up like that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And it is with a lowercase. Ooh. Don't be mad at me. All right. And now we are going to consume this. As soon as I find out where I put it. All right, so I'm gonna do a cheat real quick. I'm gonna just replace this with the blog. And yes, I keep doing the capital. Let's see if it's gonna explode. <laughs> am I already running? <laughs> I think I am. All right. Localhost 3000. Exploring the magical world of unicorns. Woo! That was quick, y'all. With the accessibility, with the responsiveness, Oh, the footer, the header, the nav, give it to me all, okay? That was so quick. Even if you're like a uh, entrepreneur and you're building out uh, MVP, prototyping, all of that stuff, you wanna be able to really build out your company's infrastructure, the core product, and be able to still have really nice front-end UI, user experience, all of that. Um, and so AI is able to assist us in so many different ways. Uh, again, I told y'all this VO was a, a V0 was a game changer. So let me go on back over here to where we're at. Whew, that was a breath. That was a breath. <laughs> Thank you. Conclusion, my money sign, yes, because we're going to get these dollars from all this AI. Especially, you better do it now before Devin takes your job. <laughs> Uh, so, Q and A time. Yes, questions. Maybe for concerns. one or two questions. And yes, y'all. This is actually the uh, QR code for this slide. And if y'all want to find me, you can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram, Camille Hall. And a reminder: We'll put all the slides up on the 200 OK channel, including this contact information. And if we have any overflow questions after this, we can also have them there. All right, I think we had a question right there. This is me with the purple hair. I was trying to do it today. Yeah, so my question is, like, what got you into speaking about AI and getting involved with that? Because since it's such, still a new technology. Devin, no, I'm playing. Uh, essentially, it was my own needs. So I want to say pretty much uh, as soon as AI came widely available for all of us, I started using it for my own personal reasons, um, to help with my business plan, things that I, didn't, I wasn't as familiar with, because uh, I'm very technical, but business, that was a whole new area. So how to create LLCs, how to create your business plan. Uh, I kind of started using it for that. And then of course I started using it for my like, core product and for, to drive uh, a lot of the products that I'm working on right now. So, I mean, it was really just through I think I have probably actually been wishing for like a little genie assistant for like the last five years so I can like increase my productivity and do a whole bunch of stuff I've never been able to do before. Cause like in the past before AI, if I wanted to do some new, you know, work on some new technologies, I would have to be on like Stack Overflow or reading all the docs. And that just took so, so, so long. And I just really wanted to get to development so I had been wishing, like, man, I just wish I had something that would just do it for me. Or like, tell me how to do it so that I can like implement it. Kind of like your IKEA um, instructions, they just, it's very simple. Just do this, do that, at least it's simple for some people, because it would be a little complicated sometimes. But for me, it was just literally wishing that I had a tool that can help me iterate and rapidly develop. So when it came out, I was like, oh, this, this is exactly what I've been needing. This is my unicorn. And I've been using it ever since and love it. 
and been able to teach and use other tools and products and other founders that are creating really cool stuff for us to use, like V0, is just amazing. Game changer for me. Awesome. I think that's all we have time for today. We'll do more questions, uh, like I said, on, on Slack. So jump them. If you have them, ask Yay. us, we can get them answered. Awesome. Everyone give it up for Camille.